I want to ask you all this question, but uh, with a twist, because we all have two children, and you all are veterans in the <laughs> sense that you got, you have three. So has the dynamic changed, and does it change each time? So does it change when it goes from one to two? Because we just had two initially. They went from one to two. We started off with two. You all went from one to two to three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I think that everything still is stays the same in terms of you have to be intentional um, about a lot of things because the dynamic of the marriage, yes, it does change from when you from when you have one. Before, we used to just get up and go. You know, you used to just get up and go, do whatever, but there's planning involved now. So really, the only thing that changes after you have the first one, the second one, the third one, or however many is, well, what other, is your level of planning, right? Your level of planning is what changes, but uh, overall, you know, you have one, you have two, you have the third one, it's almost similar uh, in terms of everything else, but just now the annual level of planning, I think, is what. Can you talk about um, your journey, um, about uh, your journey to having children, um, as far as what was it like? Um, were there um, intentions to wait? Did you just want to jump in? How was that journey um, from being, you know, newlyweds to then deciding to have children? Uh, well, with us, um, <clears throat> personally, I, I would say both of us, we didn't really intend to wait. Uh, we were, you know, if God wanted us to have it, it would happen. So we didn't really try to stop it. So, and luckily for us, after a year, like exactly after a year, you know, of marriage, we got pregnant. So, um, and then it's funny because after we had our first child, I, I was ready for the second one, you know, <laughs> but... A year went by, another year went by, it didn't happen, you know? So, um, yeah, with us, I never really, I'm, I, I was never the type to say, oh, wait, wait, you know, because at the end of the day, it's God, you know? God decides when he wants to give you a child. So with us, there was really no waiting. It's just, if it happened, it happened. If it didn't, it didn't. So. Okay. Do you want to talk about our journey? Sure. Um, I think for us, we wanted to wait because um, we said we wanted to... <laughs> We wanted to travel and do a lot of things, um, but then hindsight, no, I'll say we should have started. Because <laughs> ended up, uh, we waited, I think about, we wanted to wait for about two, two years, years and yeah. then start trying, and then <laughs> the process was starting to try, 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 um, and I don't know if you remember this, but we almost had like a miscarriage type thing, um, yeah. where, you know, we hadn't seen, uh, man. I'm just okay, about I know you're going back. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was tough because those seasons where you're, then you're trying to find out the calendar of when to, I mean, talk about scheduling sex. I mean, so it became, for me, it became a chore and it was, it took the fun out of, um, of the intimacy of marriage. And I was just like, man, you know, you had to try, oh, certain times and th- things like that. So, so the journey, it was tough. I mean, we thank God for where we are today, but it was, it was, it was tough, um, but it was, I wouldn't say maybe put a, did it put a, I don't even know if it put a strain on our relationship. I, but. I don't think it put a strain. I mean, thankfully, because, you know, we had a good friendship and, you know, we didn't see ourselves as just husband and wife, but we were really good friends, best friends to one another. We could talk about a lot of things. And one of the things that I know is that we both went through emotional roller coasters, but he made sure when I was down, he could uplift me. And I made sure when he was down, even if I felt down too, I had to put on the role of lifting him up as well. I think, um, you know, the, the, the journey was just that. It was an interesting journey. But I will say, we didn't let that hold us back from living our life. Like we still travel, we like, I mean, there's no point of us crying and being home. Let's go to Dubai, you know, like. And crying in Dubai. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, so we made sure that while we were in that season of waiting, we were enjoying our marriage because we saw a lot of people who having a child put so much strain on their relationship that it started to divide them. And we didn't want that. We said, okay, when God says it's time, it's time. But in the meantime, let's live our best life because when they come, we do know some things are gonna change. We didn't know how much. You can never prepare for how much your life is gonna change when children come. (laughs) But I will say that the six years, uh, let's say five years, because we, you know we can see five years after um, we made we we enjoyed our marriage. We made that even though some days we would cry, 
crying in Miami just felt so much better than crying, <laughs> in, you know, than crying in Silver Spring. You know what I mean? You know, uh, and, and we, you know, going to the spa in Jamaica was just so much better than going to the spa up in Fulton, Maryland. So we were intentional about, yes, we are not where we want to be, but we have so many other blessings in our life. Let's just enjoy. How was your journey? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's strange, like for me, I always wanted kids, um, but I really thank God for this girl that God put in my life, um, because one day I was even thinking about it, and I just turned to her, and I said, you know, if we never had kids, I mean, it's not like there was a problem or anything like that, it just occurred to me, like, if we never have kids, I would be okay. Like. Mm. I, I was I was I, I was shocked that I could even make a statement like that. So, um, but yeah, like the journey of having kids, our first one wasn't an an issue. Like when we said okay, we wanted to have kids, you know, we, we tried, we 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 got pregnant. Uh, one of the things we said, we were one of those couples that said, hey, we want to spend time before having kids, getting to know each other, like having time in our marriage. I think we had planned for two. Uh, but it ended up being five because she had to go. She had to go to five school. kids or five years. No, five years. <laughs> oh, okay. Five kids. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I wasn't sure if more were coming. I just no, wanted to I clarify. Okay. You know? so, um, yeah, it ended up being five years because she wanted to go back to school and all of that stuff. Yeah. The second time around, it was. We thought, oh, this is. You know, Want to get pregnant? It, it, it took us a while um, to have our second um, child, and. It, it's funny, it's, that's why it's kind of important to be careful what you say to people. Like, uh, I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know if it's just our Some people. Some people are well-meaning. Yeah, they mean well, but when they say, ah, what's going on? Like, ah, where, where are the babies? Yeah. Or like, ah, do you want us to pray for, for you? And, you know, people need to be more sensitive about it. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I, and I actually wanted us to talk about that because we each talked about a little, you know, a struggle or something at some stage. What were some of the things that were mentioned that either encouraged you or uh, wasn't an encouragement? And can you remember anything, one thing that really stuck out um, to you? I can remember something that stuck out to me, um, you know, positively. I remember when Pastor Gandhi, you know, one day he just saw me. This is before, you know, we had the boys. And he was just like, you know, yeah, let me see, let me pray with you. And, and, you know, people usually go to Pastor Gandhi to pray for him. I mean, to pray for you, but he just said, let me just pray for you. So he prayed for me, and he said, you know, you're not getting a lot of pressure from your family, but you are pressuring yourself. Mm, yeah. And I said, wow. you know what, that's right. Because, you know, our parents, we're pretty open with our parents. I have an open relationship with my mom. Like, I tell her, not in a rude way, but I tell her what I feel. And I tell her, you know, how I feel. I've adopted that with his mom too. And I think she appreciates that. So you never really know, you're never really like questioning what I'm thinking. I'm just gonna tell you. I might package it in a way that's different, but I'll tell you, they, we never got a lot of pressure from our immediate wow. family. Yeah, no. it, not the immediate one. But when he said that, I said, oh, are you putting pressure on, why are you putting pressure on yourself? Mm. Why? When God wants it to happen, it will happen. So yeah. Pastor Gandhi saying that to me really released a lot of tension and burden that was self-inflicted, right? Wow. I put that on myself, but I never realized it until he said that. Mm. So that was very helpful. Mm. And, I, you know, he's my spiritual father. I took it, you know, really, really highly when he said that. And I went back to rethink and, you know, figure out how my life was. Now, if it was somebody else that said it, I probably would have been like... You don't even understand what I'm going through right now. Can you just get out of my face? But for me, that was very helpful and comforting. What about you, positive or negative? Uh, I mean, too many negatives. But uh, some, I, 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 like Fumi said, I think thinking about it now, some of them were mean and well. But people just come up to, oh, what are you guys waiting for, you know? Uh, you guys want to be traveling all over the world. And I know we, uh, we had a rehearsed response once that we're still in our honeymoon phase. But the truth of the matter is they didn't know that we went back home to cry sometimes. Yeah. But they said those things and they were hurtful. Yeah, like, oh, what are you guys waiting for? You're just um, jumping all over the place, traveling all over the world. And I'm thinking to them, I remember one young person came to us and, oh, you guys are married now. When's the baby coming? Like, and they were like, 
do you guys know what we just went through? You know, so but you, you try and hide and, and shield it. So, but that's, that's just. Yeah, and like, I think the wow. key thing about what you said, I mean, we talked about how we cry in <laughs> Dubai, right? <laughs> um, but I think for us, we didn't want that to limit us. So people are seeing us as jet setters, <laughs> right? Not knowing that, th not that we were trying to escape the world, but we wanted to use this season instead of just crying and praying. And maybe God doesn't want this to come through until this time. So instead of you, not that you shouldn't pray about it, but you're focused too much on tomorrow instead of enjoying today. And that's one of the things we wanted to do. What about you guys, positive or negative? Really honestly, I, like you said, I think the pressure really came from myself. Um, after my first child, you know, I was, I, w I always wanted like, uh, you know, a two year gap to my kids. So when it didn't happen, you know, I put the pressure on myself. Honestly, really, you know, I tuned everybody out and it was, the pressure was more for me. Uh, my parents and my husband, very encouraging, you know, but the pressure was more for myself, you know, saying, oh, you know, I don't want, you know, I want them to be close. I want all my kids to be two years apart, you know, so the pressure really came from me. But, yeah. Yeah. And well, I'll let you say something before I say. No, I, I agree. I, I, for me, too, I think the pressure was, I mean, not necessarily from, I, what Femi told me, and actually this was very early on in our marriage um, when he said that, it always was freeing because I knew we were a team. So, like, no matter what happened, even if we couldn't have kids, not that there was anything wrong. I'm not even sure why he said what he said. But, you know, it, we are on the same page. Um, so that in itself was freeing. I didn't feel any pressure from external, uh, from internal within my family. It was more so really self-inflicted. But I will say generally, for me, what was comforting, what was encouraging, wasn't necessarily what anyone said, but I just turned to scripture. I just turned, to, I just said, God, you know, in the end, God makes everything beautiful in its own time. So I just held on to that personally, and I was like, you know what, for me, it's, it's going to happen when God says it will happen. And if it doesn't, it's okay. You, you got you got one child to focus on. Focus on that child. Focus on your marriage. And when God makes it happen, it will. You know, yeah. and that, that helped, that encouraged me. I love that because in retrospect with everything that we've done, I think, and you all can agree or disagree, our children came at the right time. Oh, absolutely. They came at the absolutely. right time for us. And like, it couldn't have happened at a better time.